Hello drummers, it's Rob Litton here from drumsaword.com and welcome to this free video drum lesson where I'm going to teach you that drum solo from the song Bang Bang by Green Day, drums by, you should know by now, Trey Cool of course. And I've got the free PDF that comes with this lesson, you can download and have this printed out in front of you as I go through this, this drum solo. It's only two bars long, there's not much to it, it's the orchestration that's the tricky part, it's all just single strokes though, but we'll go over each of the parts, uh, well, how about right now? So. It's 127 BPM. That's the half half note I've, I've chosen to uh, to represent there. If uh, we're counting it up to speed, I'd count it as quarter notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. But I'm actually counting it as one and two and three. And, uh, that's the pulse I'm feeling, the half note. So, doesn't matter though, it's still gonna sound the same however you count it. We're gonna leave out the bass drum foot for now. Um, and you can see it's just basically pumping eighth notes underneath all the way through. Classic idea this in a, in a rock solo, rock drum solo, just have the bass drum pumping underneath. I always think of the Who, Keith, uh, Keith won't, uh, won't Get Fooled Again by the Who, Keith Moon. I like that kind of stuff. Dave Gold does it a lot as well. But we just focus on the, on the hands for now. Um, and uh, really just a, it's the grouping of different notes. You just got to learn the grouping. So the first two beats, one E and a, two E and a, simple as that. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Then from beat three, we get these 30 second notes being thrown in. And it's a grouping of three notes. You could count it as one and two, three, one and two, three, one and two, three. It's the herter, basically. Um, it's, it's been used in lots, lots of other, other um, places in songs. Uh, drummers love it because it's just a, such a cool lick to play around toms. But in this situation, what Trey does is he plays it like this. But what you must do is notice that distinctive spacing of notes. It's not, it's not four notes evenly spaced, it's did 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 You can see it's just right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. He's got to come back to the snare drum for the beginning. So actually on the, on the chart itself, we get three E and a uh, four E. That's how we count it across, but up to tempo, we're not gonna worry about counting these 16th notes, we just sort of just, just feel it. Um, and you play that twice, that lick, and then to get out of it into the next bar, you just simply add a little grouping of two notes at the end. This is how I, how, how I sort of learned it, I broke it up into these little blocks. So we get this, then, then, and that's our first bar done. The second bar starts the same, one E and a, but then we get this grouping of three notes again, but moving around the top. So, so Trey is, is really sort of repeating the idea from the first bar, but playing it a lot simpler in a way. So we get the one E and at the beginning, and then from beat two, two E and a, three E. It's all right, left, right, left, right, left. I'm just going around the drums, playing a grouping of three, snare, high, low, then the hand naturally comes down to the snare drum, the left hand, snare, uh, snare, low, high. You end up going up the toms. This is a really popular tray, tray call lick. He, he does this a lot in his, in his cellars and drum fills. But that's all it is. It's right, left, right, left, single strokes, groupings of three there. And again, to get out of it, we get two E and a three E. Just add a lo another little right, left at the end. So another little grouping of those two notes falling on the and and uh of uh, beat three. And the final block to learn is just four sixteenth notes. And that takes us out of the drum fill. So slowly we get, and I will try and count it out loud, just at slow tempo. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E, E, three E and a, uh, four E and a, uh, one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a, uh, one. The counting makes it harder when, you, when you're um, playing up to speed, but when you're playing it slowly, it's, it's good that you try and count um, out loud as much as possible until, you've, until it's internalized, then you can stop the counting completely, you can just feel it instead. But here I had a little bit of difficulty counting this bit. Three E and a uh, four E. It's throwing in 30 second notes. Three E and a uh, four E. So, final thing is to add in the bass drum, and if you can't play this, um, uh, this, this fill with just the hands comfortably, then leave out the bass drum completely, it's gonna make it even harder for you. When I'm playing this, I'm not lining up the bass drum with my hands, I'm not reading it like that, I'm letting the bass drum go in autopilot. So 
in a way, it's a lot easier for me to play it, uh, well, <laughs> in many ways, than a beginner, because a beginner would have to line up the hands and limbs when they first start, as, as we all do. But the more advanced drummer can just pump it automatically and not worry about what the hands are doing. We just, we just learned to play 16th notes and 32nd notes over the top of a pumping bass drum pattern. So I'm not even thinking about the bass drum foot, which is why it makes it a lot easier for me to play. If you're finding the hand part difficult, leave out the bass drum. But play it slowly and we get a little bit of issue when it comes to lining up limbs. Let's see if I can line up the limbs correctly when I play it slowly. And what the hell, let's go, for, go up, up to speed. Let's get the metronome going. So I'm feeling one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and three. Got it in one take, that was good. So let's finally hear it played up to speed without a microphone on, without the metronome on, so you can hear just the drum fill again. Here we go. So I hope you found that fun and useful. Don't forget to download the free PDF that came with this lesson. You'll find a link beneath this video. And then also you might want to check out Facebook, my Facebook page. I'm currently sort of doing a little lead up to Christmas where I'll be doing a couple of Christmas songs um, as well as your requests over on Facebook. So you'll find a link for the Facebook page beneath this video as well or on the website somewhere. So please come on over and like. And then also consider signing up to become an online member at drumsaword.com. This is what I do these videos for. I teach full song lessons from start to finish, unlike this little mini video lesson where I taught you just a part of it. I teach you a song from start to finish, every single note, every single bar. You get the fully transcribed PDF drum chart, and I've got over 300 famous and popular songs on the website already, including probably about five to 10 Green Day songs already um, up there. And for that $97, you get to access all of those videos uh, for the whole year. As a thank you for signing up, I give you access to hundreds more video lessons teaching you many, many famous drum beats, drum fills, and other drum solos as well. Three ebooks I've written over the years containing hundreds more famous beats, fills, and solos. And then over the year of your subscription, you also gain instant online access to all the new material that I upload for my members. And I record every week, unless I'm ill or on holiday. So you've got lots and lots of cool stuff to look forward to over the whole year of your subscription. And if you're part of my Facebook page, then you also get to um, just help to decide which songs to choose. So um, if you've got any questions, email me, robertdrumsterword.com. And until our next drum lesson together, toodle pip, and happy drumming to you.